Morning guys. Is that water on the lens? Might be. It's raining. One of the disadvantages of doing a video every day, you have to come out whatever the weather. Oh well. So one of the great advantages of doing a video every day is that I get to comment directly on some of your comments that you left me on yesterday's video. Isn't that good? I shall write back to you as well, just so that other people can see the answers. But, um, yeah, I thought I'd answer some of your comments before we have a chat about my bags, as promised, this morning. Now, if I don't mention your name or your comment directly, please don't take offence. That doesn't mean that I don't appreciate all the comments that I get, even the ones with some constructive criticisms. But uh, there'd just be too many to answer them all. Um, I'm trying to keep these videos short. We'd be here till midnight. <laughs> so, DS 4547 asked me what's the name of the canal that I cycle along. It's the... It's called the Lee Navigation runs next to the River Lee, um, north of London. As far as I'm aware, it goes a lot further north than where, where I was on my Hertfordshire Part 1 video. Um, but the only parts that I cycle are normally are as far north as where. I'll try and show this on a map as well. but. Um, and in the south it flows into the River Thames, um, just south of Canning Town in London. It goes into the River Thames there. But the river is not navigable by boat, so uh, hence the reason they dug out a canal all the way along the side of it. So in the olden days they could use it for transportation of goods. And also next to the canal there is the uh, several of the large water reservoirs to supply London with water. You see them on the map as well. So Lauren Tubbs left me the comment wondering whether the tent pole that makes up my whip would separate on a windy day. Lauren, the, um, the poles come with a separate piece of uh, elasticated cord. Um, so basically you can tie that as tight as you like and mine is pretty tight um, so the elastics pulling those poles together as hard as you like I think even in a hurricane <laughs> it would have a hard job to be honest pulling those poles apart if I'm ever proved wrong I'll let you know cheers for the question Lauren Next up, David Wolfs. Hiya David, thank you for all the emails and the help and advice you're giving me. David asks, where can he get a cool mug like the one that I've got? My uh, branded channel mug. The answer is David, you can't. 
I don't think my channel's big enough yet to start making merchandise available. Um, who knows, one day, if enough people ask me for it, we'll see. But uh, no, I've, I only had, I think it was three or four of those made and uh, I've given them to my parents and I've kept one for myself. What did I keep two for myself? I don't know. But there we go. Maybe one day. Cheers, David. And can I encourage everybody to uh, have a look at the comments on yesterday's video and just have a read of the comment from Dennis Smith. Dennis, thank you so much for writing what you did. Um, there's, there's several people have commented on my videos recently um, who have different levels of disability and problems getting out there enjoying themselves and to read comments like yours is just so inspiring to me it really really is it makes this all worthwhile so thank you so much for that comment Dennis it really is appreciated I hope you fall in love with triking like I have I'm sure you will may you have many happy miles So I'm sure there's some other fantastic comments on there that I could be reading out, but I guess we'd better get on with uh, today's video, otherwise this one's going to be longer than 10 or 15 minutes again, isn't it? But um, no, thank you everybody for the comments and suggestions. We've already started to build up a list of some extra bits that I'm going to talk about over the coming days, so thanks very much. You know, I really am getting wet. You <laughs> barely see it in the camera, but uh, it's not constant rain, but it's on and off. So I have to put the camera away when when it starts chucking it down. But, uh, it's all good fun. If there's no videos next week, you know that'll come down with a stinking cold. <laughs> Time for some mud. Oh dear. Whoa. Wrong gear. There we go. It's better. Off roading in the wet. But there's a path I want to get to over there. And it's fun. Let's go through this way. I've not been this way before. Oh no. There's a reason I haven't been this way before. I can't cycle through that. Oh well, let's turn around. Do electric assists have a reverse gear? Genuinely, I have no idea. I'll probably think about it later and think to myself, well, that was a stupid question. But anybody know? Do they have a reverse gear? If they don't, they should. Right, so I've stopped under the shelter of this tree. I'll unload my bag, show you this rack, and uh, and then we'll have a look at the bags. You can pretty much see the new bag that I'm going to show you anyhow. But... Oof. 
Right, let's go for it. So, note to self, when you're just about to show somebody the rear rack on your trike, don't go off-road just before then, because it gets filthy. I just had to wipe down the back of the trike with a cloth so that you can even see it under all the mud. Same with the bags, but hey, they're all wiped off now. Right, so let's have a look at this rear rack. So, if you recall, I had something similar to this on the trike about a month ago, which I showed you in a video. However, when it was fully loaded, the uh, rear mudguard there was tapping on the wheel. Only, only just. I mean, it was just clipping it on some of the worst lumps and bumps. I didn't realise that the suspension travelled that much. So what I've done... You can see this caging that I've used. I've just included one more square on a new one. So they actually raised it by about two inches. I don't know, five, six centimetres, something like that. And that's now given me usable space on the top here. Last year in the Netherlands, I was using this space for my tent. Um, now I've got a new bag to go across there, which will give me some extra capacity. I'll show you that in a moment. But for now, that is the cage that's on the rear. So one question that was asked in the comments after yesterday's video that I can answer now. How do I attach the flag whip to the rear of the trike? Um, Brian Raymond, thank you for that question. It's the same way that I attached the fishing pole whip that I had. This is a cut off end of the old fishing pole and it's just the right diameter for the flag whip to go in there. Um, it threads down in about so far and then wedges itself in because this is tapered. It gets thinner as it goes to the bottom so it wedges in there quite nicely at about that depth. And I'm really happy with it, it's really secure. As you can see, I like my cable ties, if I can get it to focus in. There we go. Cable ties are just so easy and secure to use. Um, even the rear cage on the back is attached with these quite large cable ties. I've put my finger next to it. There you go, it's the width of my index finger. They're quite substantial cable ties. I think they're used for holding up seedling trees and that sort of thing. Before I cut them, they're about two feet long as well. Yeah. If you follow me, you'll see that I use cable ties quite a lot. I just find them really handy, really quick and easy to use. And good for all sorts of repairs on the road. So, just going back to the uh, rear mudguard or fender there, I'm um, still not happy with that. It's really not long enough. You can see the, the rear wheel is still sticking out just that little bit further. I wish there was just another, I don't know, four or five inches on the end of that. And um, because I'm still getting some mud fleck coming right off the edge of that. It's just missing it. I mean, it's getting most of it, but... I mean, if you'd have seen my bags a minute ago when I just got off the trike having been off-road, they were absolutely filthy. Can you see it on that shoulder? Yeah, I think you can see it a little bit. But considering how much mud I've just been through, that's not a lot, but I'd rather there was just nothing. If you're going to have a rear mud card, you might as well have it guarding you from all the mud, not just most of it. So the panniers I'm going to be touring with this year are the same as last year. They're the Roll Top 20 litre classics from uh, Ortlieb. Obviously in the bright yellow colour for maximum visibility on the road. All my bags are Ortlieb. I've just never really found anything that would beat them, to be honest. They're 100% uh, waterproof. Yeah, really, really good bags. Really heavyweight, durable. And uh, not too heavy for how durable they are as well. So, uh, I shall put those on the trike and show you what they look like. Bear with me. Right, so there they are on the back of the trike. My apologies for not being able to show you how I put them on there. It's pretty much impossible for me to balance on one good leg <laughs> and, and use one hand to put these on and I don't have a tripod with me for the camera today. It's a bit silly of me. Next time, eh? But there we go. That's those clamped on there. 
So for those of you that already have these alt lean bags, and I've maybe seen the rack pack on the top before, my apologies, my apologies for the next bit, but I think this part is ingenious. I don't know whether all but yeah, they must have come up with this on purpose, but uh, I'm going to show you. All Lieb include with their bags this second strap that goes over the top, which when that bag is really, really full and up here, that's really good for clamping down the stuff that's inside the bag. However, it has another purpose. You have the same on this side, the strap that goes over the top, as well as this strap that closes the bag. So, let me show you what happens next with this rack pack. So we've got the 20 litre side panniers underneath and now I've put a 31 litre rack pack again from Ortlieb made of the same materials 100% waterproof. It's got two carry handles at the top so it can lift off like so. And that sits on top of that rack quite nicely. However, the clever bit is... Right, so hopefully you can see that now. I've got a male connector coming off of this 20 litre side pannier. Here comes the rain. And there's a female connector on the top here, off the rack pack. I'm going to snap those together. Under here, we've got a male connector. You can almost see that in the camera, I think. Zoom it in a little, little bit. There, so we've got a male connector coming off of the rack pack. And we have the female connector on the pannier on the inside. So snap those together and pull these two straps tight. And that's going nowhere. I'm just going to go around and do the same on the other side. So that rack bag is now clamped down on both sides, attached to both the panniers. And sideways movement, that's pretty steady. However, there's nothing holding it front to rear. So, so I went on Amazon and I found these yellow straps to match the bags. They're, uh, I think they were one metre long each. So as you can see, I've now got those two yellow straps. They go all the way round and underneath. They go under the rack, if I can get it focused, almost. So they go under the rack there. So that's now held on, front and rear and side to side. I don't think that's going anywhere. It doesn't look the neatest at the moment because I haven't got the bags full of nice wonderful camping gear. I just threw some stuff in there just so I can show you guys today. Focus, silly camera. So one thing I am cautious about when I put a new bag on the trike is always the more bags you have the more gear you want to take along with you. So yeah, at least I'm aware of it. However, in the Netherlands last year, which was my first major tour, as you know, I really found that I could have just done with that little, like another few litres of space to put my daily food and things like that. And uh, bearing in mind, most of that rack pack is going to be taken up with my tent. If most of that rack pack is taken up with my tent, then I don't think it's going to give me that much more but it will give me that space to, like I say, just put some daily food in there and uh, another odds and sods. So apart from my rear bags then, we've obviously got the side bags and because tomorrow's video is going to be about the bracket that's holding those on underneath, I think I'm going to leave talking about those until tomorrow and I'll tell you all about them. Again, they're all leaves, but you all know that already, I'm sure. And I'm making a bit of clean as well, look at the state of that. I'm glad they're waterproof. But yeah, that's for tomorrow. So I guess you guys will have a few questions about that rack pack and the rack. And not only questions, but suggestions if you've got any. I'm always open to them, you know that. 
Um, but for today, I really am getting wet, guys. I think I'm going to go home. <laughs> Tell you what, though, good thing about being out in the wet and in the mud, it's showing me exactly where the mud's getting through on that mud guard and underneath my seat. So there's some more modifications to be made there yet. I can barely see out of these glasses now that I'm getting too wet. The camera's probably getting too wet as well. So I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you tomorrow to talk about the side bags and the side bag bracket. I'll see you then guys. Cheers. <laughs> Ta-da.